The Square Ball Podcast. Welcome to the Square Ball Weekly Show number 254. This is part two of three. In this bit, we're going to preview Brentford uh, home on Sunday. Due to the tight turnaround uh, of the games this week, obviously we had Brighton at the weekend and then we've had Palace on Tuesday night. It's now Wednesday afternoon that we're recording this. Um, what's the Brentford preview looking like in our notes? Um, Rob? <laughs> now, you know, we, we, you know we, forgot, we forgot to put Palace on when we previewed Brighton. What's happened it's again? Happened again, aren't it? Yeah. So we are going <laughs> Too to many assem- games. We're going to assemble this plane in midair, me, Michael, and Rob. I uh, mean, let's be honest. The prep is is a few screenshots from whoscored.com dot com and us slagging off some things about it, and we can do that without any yeah. prep. So. so Thomas Frank Pontus <laughs> comes back. Jonathan Douglas is good in their midfield, isn't he? And yes, Joe Dallas. Tima, Tumani uh, Diagurang. Yeah, Garaga. Yeah, Diagurang. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot his name. Dave. Then. Dave, of course. Yeah. Yes, all the great the great Brentford lads that we've had over the years. Um, yeah, they're really good, aren't they, apparently? Well, they're, they're, they're going to stay up comfortably, according to the pundits, for the, from the early weeks of the season. So uh, while we uh, <laughs> buy ourselves some time, I'm just going to look at the Premier League table and see exactly where they are. How did we end up having a rivalry with Brentford? We didn't. We didn't. It's just because they were near us in the table and they thought it was a thing. Yeah, but, I find it weird. And Thomas Frank's a gobshite. We called him out on it. And that's about the extent of this so-called rivalry. There is no rivalry. Okay, good. That's the end of that. I mean, there was the nice bit when they got promoted and Pontus in his post-match interview on the pitch just started Leeds. talking about Leeds, <laughs> yeah. which is nice. That's his yeah, uh, deeper rivalry. It's like, it's, like he, uh, he, he's, it's the ex that he can't let go of, isn't it? <laughs> Split up with her, uh, but just cannot let it go. He started talking about Bielsa, didn't he? <laughs> <He's, laughs> but you're married now to somebody else, Pontus. Yeah, but, you know, he's I, very I, much, you know, I left her. I he's left very her. much still thinking of the ex during isn't he <laughs> clearly it's like i know i've been, been promoted with brentford but i'm just going to imagine this was leeds so let me just look at how the, much better it would have been the midweek fixtures now they're playing on thursday which um feels a little bit mean good that's something for uh, our mate thomas to have a moan about so they're playing Spurs, although it's um still london so they're playing spurs away uh on thursday they're the 7 30 kickoff though not the 8 15 because that's man united arsenal and then two o'clock on sunday are you in favour of two o'clock on Sunday kickoffs? No, nah, not really. No. Although it's better than you it's know, better than half four. Yeah, or in, or indeed quarter past eight, which <laughs> did feel a little bit too late last night. So Brentford have uh, they've played thirteen as it stands at the minute, won four, drawn four, lost five. So um, they're only a game or so better. You know, one victory better than us. They are on sixteen points. We're on fifteen, having played a game more. There's some maths in there. Don't know what it is, but we go above them presumably if we beat them if they lose to Spurs this midweek mm. yeah I mean they started the season well didn't they they were even when they they drew some games they were playing really well and then they've had a, a very poor run but then they did beat Everton yeah it's it, they've had that thing they probably will stay up um, I think they will to be honest but there are worse teams yeah they've, uh, they're in that honeymoon period of Premier League aren't they and you do look at them and you see what's happened to us this season and the whole second season syndrome thing that'll get that'll get thrown at them next season Uh but they've done fine, haven't they? They have. They're a, they're a decent team. In fairness, the two years we were in the championship with them, they were one of the better teams in there, weren't they? <laughs> and they always looked, they always looked fairly well equipped for the Premier League as well. I thought like the style of play and stuff always seemed like it would probably translate all right if they did manage to get up, um, and it does seem to have done. So I guess I guess fair enough. It just seems like the the reality of the Premier League. You know how it's kind of bit for us a little bit this season. It's biting for them now. After the, they had the bright start, but then there's that kind of drag where you just you seem to lose quite a lot of games. Mm. You know, like we've well, we've played 14 and we've lost five of them already. So so at, you know, out of the 14 games we've played, we've not won 11. So that's why it's felt like a real drag this season, hasn't it? Even think, though it's, it's probably if you keep that sort of form up, then we'll be all right. But it's not exciting, is it? I think probably losing three one away at Burnley for Brentford will have been the game where they've been like, oh no. I think they lost <laughs> to Norwich as well, didn't they? They did. I feel like. I don't know. You guys are confident they're going to stay up, but I feel like if you lose to Norwich, yeah, yeah it does. It does leave uh, it on the table, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a bit worrying. Yeah, all, all you need is a bad run of form, as we've as we've seen that you can leave yourself down there. I guess the danger is for the clubs that are down in the bottom three is that they get, you know, other teams pull away from them. Um, and like Burnley have got a couple of games in hand, but you, you have to say Newcastle have got a huge challenge on now. Having not, it's December and they've not won a game. And I don't think anybody's ever escaped from that position before, having not won the first 14 games or whatever. So, Has anyone ever spent a billion pounds in January before? Uh, no. But <laughs> who, who or what are they going to spend it yeah, on? Yeah, that's the thing. I, I was reading as well that they've 
they've sort of shelved plans to appoint a sporting director for January, so they're going to be potentially spunking a load of money without anyone kind of leading who's going to be actually signing oh, them. Eddie, which, Eddie Howe in charge of your transfer policy. Which has always gone well. <laughs> Just him, who was, who was the uh, person who signed up from Liverpool for like 20 million? Solanke. Solanke, yeah. yes, could get him in. Yeah. 20 he signed everyone from Liverpool, didn't they? Jordan Ibe, who I don't even mm. think comes to a club now, but... <laughs> I mean, Newcastle is a different proposition to Bournemouth in terms of, you know, it's much higher profile, but they're in a really difficult bind in that being bottom, who's going to want to join them now, apart from people who want an absolute shed load of money? I was going to say, there's someone. Someone, yeah, but wants, there's someone no, want the cash. There's no... Very, oh, there are very few professional footballers that in the Premier League that are going to see that as an attractive proposition now. Mm. It's going to be somebody who's going to say, well, I'll tell you, okay, then I'm, I'm prepared to go down and then get promoted again. So you, you, you're shopping in a particular pool of players aren't you they should have the decency to just do that just what? accept relegation that's what i think they should do in january sell mm. sell players if anything sell send maximum to us for well we need more wingers don't we um <laughs> 40 million pounds it's which too will, much i think less than that um and then then they can go they can just go down meekly is what i think they should do <laughs> so they can take up one of the places i wouldn't mind brentford going down to be honest mm. just because thomas you're thinking of thomas frank aren't you they're not really a Premier League team, are they? I know, I know we, I know we, can, I know we are going to fall foul of um, uh, people saying, "Oh, you know, wank entitled wankers." You know, they've no, you can't say that. But just look, Angus Kinnear. Look at the Daffodil Angus, Stadium. Angus Kinnear said <laughs> in his controversial program notes that no one's got a god-given right to be in the Premier League. No, and he's le right. Least of all Leeds. And he's right, but it doesn't mean I have to like them being there. Mm -hmm. And I'd just rather they weren't. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not a fan of the ground. I feel like it's weird no. in that I feel like everyone, everyone's opinion of what the ultimate Premier League teams should be is kind of based upon when you're about 13. <laughs> We've got Sheffield, like Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah, is, like Sheffield so, yeah. Wednesday, that's fine. They can be in. I'd even like Swindon, I think, might be all right in there for a bit. Or Oldham. Yeah, I'd weirdly think of like Portsmouth as being a Premier League club. Even though Swindon shipped 100 goals when they got relegated. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They were terrible and weren't in the Premier League for very long at all. And yeah, like Portsmouth now are million miles away yeah. from it, aren't they but it's like, Charlton <laughs> well you grew up with a team there you sort of think oh no that's that, that's acceptable and I think that's why I just can't deal with Brentford in the Premier League because it, it just feels it just feels so wrong it felt weird when we played them in the championship at one stage <laughs> never mind playing them in the Premier League so and uh, yeah I mean just looking at the last game you know under seven I, I assume it was sold out and still under 17,000 you can't build a new stadium that's that's 17,000 to be in the Premier League. Can they expand it? I think they can on one stand, can't they? But they're so hemmed in by three railway lines that there's not a lot of room to do much there. And is that even the demand is the question, isn't it? Just just go down. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy. It'd be for the best. It's nothing personal, like, but... Anyway, they're going to beat us now, aren't they? Yeah, well, they, they wear this stuff like a badge of honour, though, don't they? Yeah, they do, in fairness. I don't, think, I don't think they're massively um, annoying as a fan base or anything. Well, I just... hmm. <laughs> oh, go on. No, just one or two moments when we were sort of milling around them in the league and just there were some accounts that were just, when we got promoted, you know, just having a little little pops at us about us blowing it and actually we ended up winning the league by 10 points. So it was nice to give that that payback. And I, and I know that, like, be sotted, I think we may even follow one another on Twitter that's their fan channel slash podcast and stuff who were dead reasonable and, you know, all that when we um, first started following them. But I think somebody in their fold has uh, has gone a bit wild and likes to just start digging everybody out including us oh well so hopefully they'll, <laughs> they'll hopefully we'll beat them and then they'll get really upset that's all <laughs> i want but um we haven't talked talked properly about thomas frank actually and i think he's he's part of the issue with them has he been more humble since they've come up or not i know he's very deferential i saw a bit of um, sky sports news when i got in last night and he's been very complimentary about um about conte because obviously they're playing spurs this midweek and he was saying he's one of the world's great coaches and he was kind of you know well hopefully we can get something which is very on thomas frank like who normally is chewing gum with an open mouth and declaring that they're the best team since sliced bread i think he did before the playoffs last year say the same thing again where he's like yeah we're gonna win it it'll be fine you, you just don't learn do you? Mm. I know, and they've got this i think they're all the well lights kind of by neutrals because there's this humble club that do everything the right way but then you think well your manager's like the opposite of that isn't it yeah he's just always got I've obviously got a bad vibe off him. <laughs> <laughs> Careful. <laughs> it's, it's fair to say. It's just it's just a bit cringe. I find him like his whole laid back, long hair, middle aged man. I don't know. I just I, 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 there's, there's something there's something I've, I feel I feel unsettled by about him. I know it's bad to shame people's appearance, and you know, for God's sake, you know, by all means pick on me. But 
I think he's keeping his hair long to hide his ears. <laughs> he's got he's got old man like goblin ears. Have you seen them? They're very long. I haven't, but I'm gonna now. He's got very long ears. Frank ears. Yeah. Let me uh, let me just do some live googling of his of his ears. Uh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Although, he's, he's, although he's cupping them on one of these pictures, which is maybe a unless, he, unless he's midway through hiding it, <laughs> he's, he's, just, he's just about to pull it around the front. But yeah. you, you you do get upset at men with long hair, don't you? Middle aged men in particular. <laughs> He's, he's too. Is he too old to have long hair? I don't know. Maybe some people with long hair are still are still pulling it off. He's got a very um. Yeah, how can I describe what was wrong with him? <laughs> he's like a sort of a, a, a someone's. You can do it. That's not in in a way that's not going to get us in trouble. In a way that's not libelous. Yeah. Okay. He's like <laughs> a teacher who's trying to be like mates with you, even though you're thinking you're about thirty years older than me, mate. This is this is weird. Okay. Is that is that fine? I think so. Okay, cool. I'll leave it at that. Right, I'm just looking at Brentford now on who scores, which, as you said, is part of our uh, the extent of our research. So they've they've. Uh, oh, I don't want. I've got a video from Liverpool auto playing. Go away. <laughs> but we've got um, loss, win, loss, loss, draw, win. So it's yeah, it's just patchy form, isn't it? Loss to Leicester. Attack through the middle, long balls, playing in their own half, mm. and they're good at attacking set pieces and aerial duels. What does that mean then? Let's have a look. It means they're going to head in some corners. Okay. Maybe. Weak at keeping possession of the ball. Would though. Ponta celebrate, do you think, if he scored? Uh, Yes, but he'd try and make it out like he was being considerate of the home fans, I think. Do they play three at the back? Is that right? Three, five, two. What reception will Ponta get? I think he'll get, get, it'll be a bit pantomime, I think. I yeah. think he'll get a good reception and he'll he'll go to the crowd to sort of engage with it like he'll he'll go on the front foot and like he'll be giving applause to everybody but he'll get booed during the game if he does you know <laughs> it, something we've played him before haven't we yeah. it was he fairly, was the Nketiah game wasn't he yeah it was it was actually fairly low key wasn't it I think everyone expected there to be a bit more happening either him mm. trying to make himself the centre of it or trying to you know going over the top with kind of applauding the home crowd and stuff but I think in the end not much happened i've got a lot of love for ponta still i still I hold, him, I still well, hold really. him in in really high affection i think i know i know he had the sort of sat on the advertising boards drawing attention to himself thing and he was a bit like that sometimes but yeah i i mainly have very good memories of him the the sort of the early early days of pontus he was pretty much the best thing about us mm. and he was en he was entered for a center back he was hugely entertaining which was watching him celebrate tackles and corners and things like that yeah. was a lot of fun at the time he was he was good fun in a time when Leeds mainly wasn't. So yeah. so fair play to him. Yeah, I do like I like him and I like all that side of him. Maybe it didn't quite fit for Bielsa and that's why he bombed him out unceremoniously. Mm -hmm. You know, sold his what he described as his best player at the time, didn't he? Um, despite that, he's got to go. If he's not going to toe the line, he's got to go. But he, I mean, Pontus himself seems quite philosophical about it, apart from banging on about it in that interview <laughs> at Wembley nonstop for about for about ten minutes. I mean, just been promoted with Brenton, uh, Brentford, sorry. And he's got his Premier League time now, hasn't he? Yeah. As well, I think that was the thing. It felt like when he he didn't go up with us, then didn't go up with Brentford. You were sort of thinking, for his sake, this is maybe a bit of a shame, mm. even if um, the team plays for us, no no business being in there. <laughs> I do like the idea of him though, because he was so passionate with the fans, and he was always kind of trying to rouse the atmosphere. And then mm -hmm. he's gone and signed for a team with a seventeen thousand stadium. <laughs> That's in London, though, isn't it? You get to live in London for a bit, which some people like. Um, how do you think this one's going to go? There's a lot less pressure on this game, it feels like now, because we beat Palace. I think platform is that uh, Palace is that the platform now for this game? So that you would hope that when Sunday comes around, we're building on what we saw there. Which, you know, we didn't dominate from start to finish, but we were far more convincing and we were competitive probably for the 90 minutes. And we might have Bamford back. Mm. Well, you'd think he'll at least be on the bench after playing a full game for the for the 23s. Well, so that, that'll that, make a difference. That is the other question. Would you play Tyler Roberts up front again? If Bamford's fit enough, I'd put Bamford in. If right. we're convinced he's sharp enough. He he was knackered in the second half. Mm -hmm. Bamford, of that 23s game, like he wasn't meant to play the full 90 and it showed. Mm -hmm. So I would have I would be happy for Roberts to start and Bamford on the bench. It's just nice to have options again, isn't it? I think. Exactly, yeah. Just being able to look to the bench and see some grown-ups is nice. I think that, you know, we, you play Tyler Roberts for an hour and give Bamford 30 minutes or whatever it might mm -hmm. be. And it's a, it's a good, solid sub that you're bringing on isn't it Luke Ailing off the bench as well potentially for when we've um, we're having to move Stuart Dallas around which we inevitably are Ailing did a nice flop about five minutes <laughs> he in did. he was like alright oh, he's back <laughs> we good he's not lost it 
having criticised Palace for diving. If and when the pair of them come back, would that put us then to full strength? And Robin Cock. Cock, yeah. Keep forget poor Robin. Mm-hmm. Keep, I've seen more comeback videos from him than... <laughs> yeah, they keep posting them down yeah. there on Instagram. Hundreds of them. Yeah, nearly there. Did you see his little, um, his little raffle giveaway yeah. thing he was doing? <laughs> and <laughs> Click got involved. <laughs> yeah, that was nice on the... It was on Instagram, wasn't it, that thing? I think so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. yeah you kind of forget we own Robin Cock, don't you? Because he spent so much time injured since we've signed him. But... I did. I genuinely had forgotten about him then, so sorry. <laughs> sorry, Robin Cock. <laughs> How do you think this one's going to go? I think I, I did predict four points from these three games so I, I suppose I have to say we're going to lose you don't have to you can re- you can revise it you're allowed to change that's the beauty of this it's football isn't it you can make it up as you go along I think we'll draw you I, think? I said after Brighton I'd take five from nine mm. so the, a draw would take it up but I don't know after Palace I just feel a lot more relaxed and feel like I can go to Ellen Road on Sunday and try and enjoy it whereas last night it was getting there and just thinking God I hope we don't lose <laughs> I think the other side of this is you, you look at teams like Palace and Brentford and to an extent Brighton but Brighton like you said they they might have a bit of a number on us when Graham Potter's there they're all just in this middling group of Premier League clubs some of whom are slightly better than others on the day every day when Brighton are concerned but there's nothing to fear from this is there shouldn't be why are you so worried (laughs) just cause let's not bully you into being positive no exactly uh, exactly be even more negative let me be miserable We'll scrape a point why so- <laughs> with a shit performance. Why, why so fearful, Michael? Just because I don't think we, I don't think we're fully in gear yet, and I feel like on the day most teams could probably take us in our current state mm. because we're not, we've not been brilliant at any point. But, but nor have Brentford been clearly because they've lost loads of games. Yeah. So, and we might be brilliant on Sunday. That's the thing. There's always a chance that it will click. That is true. You know, we've made it this far in the season without being really convincing and we're sort of floating around lower mid-table. Be all right. That's if you think we'll win. I I, don't, I see no reason to doubt this team. I love them all dearly and I've got confidence in them. Rob? Yeah, a nervy win, I think. I'm confident. How, da- how Dallas nervy, winner, maybe. How nervy is nice. it going to be? Very. This is Tyler Roberts' day, isn't it? How many, how many days have we said that? Well, what's his? he's got like one guy. Is it one in forty four or something like that is his goals. Yeah, I mean he's he's won Premier League goal, isn't it? Something mm. like that, yeah. Which was at the end of last season when he had about four attempts at it against Southampton. <laughs> I mean he's not he's not looked near to score he didn't look near to scoring the other day, did he? Against um against against Palace. But against Brighton, I mean he had a few uh, a few shots. He just works really hard last night, Roberts. I remember watching mm. him again. I can't remember if it was against Leicester, but there was a moment where he, he did his thing where he did a nice turn and then gave the ball away. But then straight afterwards, Stuart Dallas was on the floor and managed to win the ball and get it to a lead spot. And you think, that's what you need, just a bit of like bloody-mindedness. Mm-hmm. And I think last night, and maybe with Bielsa's comments about him needing to, as long as he's fighting for a place here, then he's ha- he can stay under me. I think... Yeah, maybe he's just got a bit more attitude to now, hopefully, after last night. So Tyler Roberts hat trick in a win. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, th- I view these results almost on a, I guess it's like a spectrum now, rather than you, you've either got the loss, the draw, or the victory. But my, my view kind of, it's somewhere along the scale, if you like. So I'm sort of, I'm about, I'm soft win territory <laughs> at the minute. Right. That's what that's how I feel. Given, Two points. Yeah. Given the current state of mind and the confidence levels and the fact that people are returning, I'm kind of veering towards the idea that at some point it clicks, uh, like it did in the first half against Spurs. But if we can build on the victory against Palace, I'm sort of, yeah, I'm about two points is, is about where I am. That's a good description. What about you? I'm probably similar. I was looking today at um, the goals in our games recently. You have to go back to the Liverpool game and still, since someone scored more than two goals in a game. Um, so, yeah, but I don't really see that changing the way we play. And so I think it'll be a low scoring. You know, two, cl- two clean sheets on the bounce as yeah. well. Let's not forget that, that we are building something like we've tightened up at the back. I mean, the Brighton game, they had some <laughs> really, really good chances. Yeah, but they didn't score, though, did they? Benteke should have. Didn't score, though, did he? No, but should have done. So? The chances in every game. <laughs> yeah, I know. I and Spurs' just... goals were so fluky. This is just how it works. Sometimes yeah. you get lucky. Sometimes you're unlucky. Okay. Yeah. So, I'm not I'm not willing to pat, us, pat ourselves on the back for brilliant defensive performances and include Brighton in it. Last night, I thought, actually, we, were, we did do pretty well. There was just the Benteke chance, and giving away one chance in a game isn't actually that bad, but against Brighton it felt like they on another day would have if it wasn't Brighton because they never score on another day another team would have had about four in that game so we're both soft win what are you going for? So, can I have a soft draw? or is a draw just a draw? Uh, is that 
on the side of defeat or is it on the side of victory? I'm not sure. It's a one uh, one point two, <laughs> <laughs> which which is still not nearer to victory, is it? So, yeah, a a, a solid draw. I mean, Angus Kinnear is talking about, you know, how we regulate football and stuff and we should consult the fans. This is what we need to do. We need to change the point system completely. So you can get 1.2 points. You can get two points. It's fine, isn't it? If you get 1.2, does the other team get 1.2? Or do they have to... 0.8, I think, for I was going to say, if you've got a... If you've not... If you've been the worst team in a draw, do you get less? Yeah, so, it was, so, so Brentford get 0.8 points. We get 1.2. Okay. Everyone's happy. A nice decimal sort of league table <laughs> with yeah. points all over the place excellent that wraps up part two of the show then the weekly show uh, we have the heroes and villains section to come in part three so check out your playlist for that the square ball podcast